You know, today I want to make a little bit different video because there's always so much emphasis on the alcohol use disorder and the person who is suffering from alcoholism and how it is destructive to them and to the family members. But you know, what about the family members themselves? What do they do? What do they have to go through to deal with this on a daily basis? What are their outlets? You know, in my case in particular, there was myself and there was our son. Uh, and there's positive things that happened and negative things that happened in dealing with uh, my wife's ongoing alcohol use disorder. And it was a day-to-day -day problem. And there was always toxicity and drama and on some level almost every day the last few years of her life. But how we dealt with it, I personally, uh, I lifted weights uh, five, six days a week, heavy weights. Uh, we had a, a gym and then I had weights at home, and I still do, but I, at that time, I think the time my, by the time my wife died, I weighed uh, a little over six foot tall. I weighed about 255 uh, with very little fat content on my body. Uh, I was, I think I was around 11%, you know, so I was um, pr pretty solid. Um, when I was 56, as far as powerlifting, I mean, I deadlifted 752 pounds, which is a pretty, pretty large amount for the size of person that I was. Uh, and, and it was a lot of it was just focus. I needed something to focus away from all the angst and, and just toxicity and just dealing with having an alcoholic in the family. And looking back now, I realize my son slipped through the cracks a little bit because I wasn't paying enough attention to him. I think I was so focused on dealing with my wife. But he had an eating disorder uh, when he was in high school. And he kind of ballooned up to, when my wife died. He was just 19. Or actually, he was 19. He was just going to turn 20. That was four years ago. He weighed almost 300 pounds. He was 298 pounds. Uh, when he dropped him off of school, he, he was pretty heavy. Uh, Really about the time, a few months before uh, that she passed away, he had gone to college and he started losing weight at that period. Within uh, a year of my wife's passing, he dropped 115 pounds and he went down to 185 pounds. I think a lot of it was just the stress that he had absorbed, you know, living around the same toxicity that I was. I dealt with it my way and he dealt with it his way. And you know, I, I felt bad that he was that heavy, but I'm also very proud that he took control of the situation and completely corrected it shortly after her passing. And really the reason why I speak of these things um, and, and our little stories is that family members need to take care of themselves. Their own mental health is just as important as the alcoholic in their family. And you have to do things just like the alcoholic will need to do when they start recovering is to find purpose. You need to exercise, you need to do something creative, you need to build your relationships that are in your life, reestablish relationships and find purpose and have an ultimate goal of what you want to do with your life and have focus. Uh, the Not just the alcoholic needs to do that, but certainly the family members. It's just as important because they're all part of this disease that has in, you know, that has visited your family. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is for family members to take care of themselves. It's, it's just so important and not get too caught up uh, in what's going on with the alcoholic and the family, not be dragged down with the shift. Certainly there may become a point where you need to cut that tie. Uh, if it doesn't change, if there's denial and gaslighting and you see no change and there's just a lot of irrepre irreprehensible uh, activities going on with the alcoholic and there's nothing you can do to change and it's just doing nothing but cause you stress, but it's time to step back and take care of yourself. And again, if you're ready to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I've helped thousands of alcoholics and just as importantly, I've helped their families. So. Uh, again, click on the link above. It's in the uh, calendar link. Set up a Zoom call. Uh, I want to go with, know what's going on with you. I like, to, I like people who are not actively drinking, um, are coachable, uh, and are, are ready to change their life. Uh, I'm going to change the alcoholic's life and everybody in that person's life that's important to them. Again, please like, share, and comment. And again, we have a Facebook group called Amanda, A Cautionary Tale of Alcoholism. 
become a very good support group. And again, thanks for listening.